Hi all, I have another very exciting game of Leader Chess to show you. Playing black against Laser TSAT Cup. Time control 30 minutes with a 10 second increment. The opening moves given to both E4, E6, the French defense. And here, Laser chooses Knight D2, the Tarash variation, off a Siegbert Tarash. Uh, so C5, we have Knight G F3, Knight F6. Now laser takes on d5 to saddle black potentially with the dreaded isolated queen's pawn. Not yet, but after bishop e7, here, here goes d takes c5. A very standard procedure here to get that nice blockade square on d4. So white can often play to like blockade the d4 square, but moves like that later. So this is a very important d4 square to think about the blockade potential against the d pawn. We have knight takes c5. However, the outpost, uh, there's two outposts that this pawn provides, and there's also two major files. Uh, so the e and the c files. Now factor in also, this is another thing about this. If white reinforces the d4 blockade square with a move like c3 later, that could also be prone to undermining in its own right with something like b5 and b4 so bear that in mind as well rook e1 more standard it seems as knight b3 immediately for example knight c e4 knight d4 so we have a blockade but uh, actually it seems as though black might be okay here it's thought to be about equal rook e1 we have black castling knight f1 rook e8 bishop e3 so that comfortable blockade is being set up here on that d4 square Rook c8. However, the rooks are enjoying themselves, so both rooks are starting to enjoy themselves. This c rook and the e file rook. So swings and roundabouts. C3, we have a6. So with the idea potentially of playing for b5 and then maybe b4, which would uproot white's control of d4 here. Uh, so that's something to think about uh, in this position. We have h3. The bishop drops back. a3 which seems to indicate <laughs> that there's no chance of b4 ever from black however is Leela put off b5 anyway uh, with a3 being played knight a4 is more tempting in some some cases bishop d4 knight f e4 so fully using the perk the perks of the uh, isolated queen's pawn that nice square e4 uh, here queen c2 knight e6 rook a d1 and yeah, the, the dark square bishop is volunteered here. So knight takes, leader does take it. So at the moment, it seems as though maybe there isn't that many prospects for this bishop. What can it possibly do in this game? In this kind of position, isn't d5 a liability here? We have queen d7, knight e3, uh, rook c d8, rook e2, g6, the bishop fianchettos. So it's going to be putting pressure on this diagonal. On the knight like that so knight b3 the knight gets out of the way knight f6 there's also now a threat on d5 here so white is actually threatening some stuff on d5 big threat of the game but the knight just retreats queen d2 now queen c8 defending again indirectly with the rook now so knight c2 if white's not winning that d pawn is the comfort of the d4 square enough for white to be getting on with Rook e4, so the rook switches with the knight basically for the e4 square usage. Rook takes, knight takes, queen f4. Now rook d6 with a tactical threat actually of rook f6 and then f2 is a problem pawn here. So f3 kicks the knight. Uh, we have now knight c5, knight bd4. And yeah, when I was looking at this on live, I thought Leela's in trouble here. I actually really did feel that intuitively to be honest uh, even though Leela has the dark square bishop but there's room for optimism when you've got a dark square bishop like this without a counterpart I feel actually you should be optimistic optimistic you've got something which is is really potentially dangerous when it's without any counterpart but how to prove that the dark squares in black's position are potentially vulnerable are, are these actual li liabilities potentially because of this dark square bishop Let's see, queen d7, queen e3, knight a4, celebrating that this this knight is difficult to kick without further weakening. 
rook b1 bishop g7 knight b4 now the rook holds the a6 pawn here so against the glare of the knight and it holds d5 it's doing a good job there we have knight c5 knight bc2 bishop f6 nifty move bishop f6 uh, so rook e1 knight a4 rook b1 h5 yes black is going to be pursuing a dark square strategy fixing down these pawns so that dark square in particular, in particular will be the first dark square targeted for further grip so this iron grip knight c5 is emerging rook e1 knight e6 we have queen d2 now perhaps white can just simplify for example like this this doesn't seem to be too big of a problem this position seems about even but uh, we have queen d2 being played bishop g5 hitting the queen uh, queen f2 h4 so marking out the dark squares so the pawn breaks are being sealed off this is a trademark leela positional game uh, maybe you know a, a, a player like Grandmaster Adams known as the spider is a master also of of doing this kind of clamping down of pawns on both sides of the board that's how he got his nickname the spider positional like crushing chess rook d1 uh, so knight f4 and Adams by the way is one of the most consistent super grandmasters been over 2700 for years and years so this kind of positional play is rock solid and reliable generally king g7 queen e1 we have knight h5 king g1 queen c7 queen f2 knight f4 king h1 a5 kicking these these pesky knights back so knight bc2 it's not possible to play knight takes b5 here you might think hang on there's a pawn hanging here isn't there uh well actually you know if knight takes b5 can you see what black plays here okay quick tactical test black has queen b6 so that eyes the queen here and both knights will be attacked in this position uh this this is just nasty so for example queen takes rook takes and both knights are attacked black's ending up losing material so that's that is what makes a5 possible here knight bc2 we have rook b6 preparing and this is a beautiful thing about the chess the classic minority attack where the minority of pawns here are attacking a majority of pawns here and you might think well why would you do that well here actually there's a special perk usually it's just for isolating pawns but actually it's like uprooting the knight the roots of this knight it's stable because of the c3 pawn take out the c3 pawn and this could be really dangerous for white wobbling on the dark squares that is the most central dark square of white's position and we have king g1 uh king g8 for a moment king h1 and now knight h5 so here uh, we have knight e3 the knight steps away basically giving white sorry giving black the free hand to play b4 because the knight was controlling the b4 square there and it's just stepped away but it's hitting d5 for a moment so leader comes to protect d5 but now still b4 is on the cards and white's solution here is to play b4 now this is a very tactical solution weakening basically c3 by that pawn moving forward these two are, are, are kind of weaker now c3 and a3 are, are, are weaker than usual uh, now you might think th this is actually getting to be a troublesome position here uh, if king g1 let me just show you the power of b4 just for fun c takes a takes and say a4 b4 and not only has the c3 root system of d4 been taken out but further than that for example this situation uh, arising with rook b4 is absolutely winning for black immediately so it's nothing about structure even even if white gets for a moment a pawn there d4 is just uprooted this is just losing material so that can be the devastation that arises from uprooting d4 so we have this b4 move very radical move so 
Now what's going on here? So d5 is on the fire. Black doesn't want to take on c3. Uh, so we have actually a takes and the queen steps back holding d5. King g1. Now knight f4. So that holds d5 relieving the queen of duties potentially. Knight g4. We have rook a6. King h1. Queen drops back to b8. g3. Bit desperate here. Is there an iron grip going on? What would happen if this g3 wasn't used? It seems it smacks, it smacks of desperation. King g1, queen c8, for example. This position, black's getting the upper hand. Look at that knight combining with the rook here on the seventh. Beautiful attack coordination on g2. This is just really dangerous. Uh, so, for example, knight f2, bishop f6. This situation is just getting horrible. Yeah, things are falling apart basically. So G3 trying to get rid of this iron grip that leader is establishing on the dark squares. So if the queen takes now queen D8, uh, this is a very prudent move actually. Queen E8 discouraging H4 totally. If Rook A2, then maybe H4 is interesting because of that knight being pinned to the queen. So there's no knight H5, and this is actually uh, at least equal this position so that's to be avoided at the very least so queen d8 getting out of the pin knight so now there's always knight h5 to kick the queen uh, we have queen h2 being played uh, so let's let's imagine you know if h4 we can see now that knight h5 is possible and then uh, not even taking on h4 is needed actually bishop f4 bishop g3 and then taking on h4 is even more effective so queen h2 we have knight h5, you know, with my ideas of bishop f4, look at white structure. It's wrecked. Isolated pawn, isolated pawn, backward pawn on on the semi open C file. This is this is wrecked. The good looking remnants of white's position, there's still a blockade on d4 on the bright side, but it's really hitting thin air. I mean, really, apart from the pawn on b5. So anyway, queen f2 is played. And now we have bishop h4 driving the queen to g2 bishop g3 the bishop is making its way to f4 so it's in contact with the center as well as the g3 square knight f1 look at this bishop it's kind of dominating this knight look at this knight here uh, its squares are restricted now fully by this bishop on f4 so a very very nice piece compared to the knight domination of the knight dark squares intensification Queen c7, dark square play, queen e2. Uh, we have now, let's say instead of queen e2, knight e2, then there's the nasty pin. Look at this, pinning the knight to the queen. Rook on the seventh, can't be bad. And this is just horrible after queen e2. Black's absolutely winning. So queen e2, keeping track of the a2 square here. But losing the c3 pawn, it has got pretty desperate, the scenario now. Because look, how is actually c3 even defended here? This bishop controls that c1 square. So white is shedding that c3 pawn. We have now queen c2. This is just desperate. Queen c4. And now, thanks very much, protected past pawn after the queen's come off. And this is just looking diabolical. Bishop, the bishop is nudged, goes to h6. Rook on the seventh now, so there's a protected pass pawn. Finally, the d5 pawn is an issue for a moment. Rook a3, that is taken though. c3, big pass pawn with its docking square guided by the bishop here. So the pawn just wants to step forward a little bit this way, ideally. <laughs> so knight f e3 is played. Sorry, after c3, knight f e3, knight f4. Knight c2, we have rook a2. Knight d e3, we have knight takes h3 check. Yeah, this is just all over, it seems, by the shouting. King g7, this is just a terrible position. Look at that past c pawn. Now, the black rook gets behind white's runaway pawn there. And now takes on uh, e3. And now c2, this is just winning material. So knight takes c2, desperate. And Leela is easily able to convert this position. That pawn is not going anywhere. Rook b1, the game ended here. This pawn is just not going anywhere. For example, knight e6 
and a knight d8 is sufficient to round up that pawn. So let's go back to the final position. So very, very nice game from Leela. I was concerned though with the isolated queen's pawn. It seems Leela pro proved uh, beyond reasonable doubt there was good compensation on the dark squares with the dark square bishop with marking the dark squares. Minority attack potential was revealed. Maybe white slightly misplayed that to allow um, uh, the possibilities to have to play b4. It seems like a compromise uh, move, reducing stability of white's position. c3 later became vulnerable. And the bishop maneuvering was just superb, you know, round h4, g3, f4. So, a really instructive game again on the dark squares in particular against Leila. I hope you enjoyed it as much as me. Comments, questions, like, shares, appreciate it. And with this game, Leela knocked out Laser from the Cup. So this is a Division 1 uh, chess engine for TSEC on massive hardware, just being knocked out of this Cup in Round 1. It did do well, though, in the first six games. They were all solid draws with Laser predicting zero, as in no, no, no advantage whatsoever. But yeah, it crumbled in, in Game 7 and 8. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much. Cheers.